This segment's being sponsored by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, guys, this week's call-in segment's being sponsored by our friends over at Taylor's Archery. Y'all can find them at 100 East Lauderdale Street over in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Or give owner Tracy Taylor a call, 931-563-7706. Let them take care of all your archery needs. They've got a great indoor range there for those rainy days. You better get to it quick because time's running out fast, guys. We're opening up next weekend. You ready to go, Wes? I'm ready. Man, yep. it's coming. Hey, if y'all want to go ahead and give us a call, you can do that now if you like at 615. 737-7767. We've been talking with Dan DeWitt tonight in West Stone. We're talking all about uh, deer glands and scents and communications. We've talked a little bit about mock scrapes now, Dan, and, and where you look to set those up. Uh, but now what I want to move to is you found your spots, you found your old scrapes, whatever you're going to set these up. Uh, what are you going to do now? Do you just go over there and just take your hand and scrape out a big, uh, you know, what, what is your typical way you go through No, I, I really, I use these really high-tech tools. I mean, you've got to get high-tech. I know you did. you got to get high-tech with your tools. I always find an old dead stick or uh -huh. broke-off stick, and I use that stick. And I clean it out, and then I throw it away. And I get people telling me all the time I put too much scent in the woods because <laughs> I don't wear my rubber boots and I don't wear my rubber gloves. But seriously, I've done thousands of mock scrapes, okay? And I think people, there again, make things too, too complicated. But seriously, the biggest mistake people make in a mock scrape is they use too much scent. When I use my scent or anybody else's scent, who's ever you using, I don't care. Two or three shots on the limb, five or six in the dirt, and I never go back for 10 days. Okay. I, I don't care if it floods, you know, like Mississippi the other day, the guy, the two days after we did it, four inches of rain had come. They're calling me up, man, we need to go over fresh. And I said, leave it alone. Yeah. Okay. And that afternoon, they had more bucks back in the scrape. So Plus, if you overuse it, again, we're, everything we're doing here, you, you're successful with it because it's natural. When you go and put half a bottle of juice in there, that's not natural. Sure. It, it's way too strong, way too much scent, and it's immediately not going to be natural to the deer. I mean, it's, it's kind of like wearing cologne. You're going to wear the whole bottle, half a bottle, exactly quarter bottle, and right. a couple of spritz. Yep, and a couple of spritz is great. The Depends on where I'm going. It's going well, turn it don't around. matter. You still, <laughs> you still get blown there. out. Yeah, you would wear it. We got some color. There's always that guy. Uh, all right. James, how are you doing tonight? Doing well. How are you doing? Doing great. We appreciate you calling. Got a quick question. Uh, I was curious about the uh, the thoughts on the estrus. The, uh, you know, like the Tink 69 or whatever, you know. I know that we're talking about the glands, but the estrogen yeah. that's in them. Okay. That, that, that's all I got. Okay. Let me have that one. Um, the estrus only use it, I don't care what brand it is, mine or any Tink 60, I don't care who's you using. If you use it outside the rut, you might as well be sitting in your stand blowing a bugle because it's the wrong time, the right scent, but the wrong time. Maybe two bugles. I agree with that yeah. 110%. The estrus is a great scent. If it's used at the right time, it's good. You'll see some of these scents that have it in there. Uh, the deal with that is it'll be a very low percentage of, of estrus per whatever's in that bottle. Um, and it does work. I'm not sitting there saying it doesn't. If you hit that right few weeks, it does work. It does. Uh, what we're and the reason, and that's actually kind of sets me up for a good, you know, kind of what we're hitting on tonight is that does work for a few weeks out of the year. What we're talking about right here works 365 days a year, that's right. and that's the reason why. That's the difference. Is there are certain things in communications and things deer do do during the rut. Uh, that's when their their tarsals get a lot more active at that point. You know, tarsal gland. You say, well, I got this big old buck, man, he's stunk. It's not because his tarsals. It's because he's he is constantly at that point in time doing what they call a rub uh, rub urination, and he'll rub his tarsals together. And I sound, but that's what they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and during that period of time, yes, it is probably much more effective during that period of time uh, than it would be another time of year like Dan hit on you put go put some doe esters out next week you, you fit you gonna blow the whole woods out you'll sure. hear them blowing from a quarter mile away not because they know a humans up there because they know it's not natural that's the key thing is when you're dealing with deer turkeys or anything it's not how smart they're anything like you say they're survivors survivors and it has to be natural and if it's not natural they know it's not natural they don't know that it's it's 
it's Dan sitting up here in a tree or whatever, but they know it's not natural, and that's one of the keys. But and it's natural in January it as it is, is in November. Natural. That's exactly right. Uh, Mike, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. Great show tonight. This is near and dear to my heart. I like all this Glenn talk about deers. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I think it's good. <laughs> hey, a uh, question for you, Dan. Uh, and Wes may have told me this, I read it or whatever, but I do a weird thing. Do you ever collect from the orbital glands and the gland between the hooves on the deer that you kill? I used to. Oh, I think it's, 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 it's okay to do it. But here's the question. How do you preserve it? You know that's well. That's that's that's, yeah, that's a one-time use type thing. Yeah, that's that, that's the a hundred. It is. That's it, the big elephant in the room. That's why I developed synthetics and went that away with it, so that it's consistent throughout and it don't go bad. Right. And 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 Mike, a little bit more towards what you're saying. If you were to cut those glands and you used them the next day, they, they would be effective. But as soon as you freeze it, number one, you got to remember the scent. It's it's produced by bacteria. So what's right. going to happen when you right, freeze it? Right. You just you killed. Know, it. You just killed the bacteria. So that, or if it stays, uh, you know, exposed to air too long, you're going to add more bacteria. The scent's going to change. So you would have a very limited time to use it. But during that limited time, yes, it would yeah. probably be very absolutely. Effective. Yeah, great deal, great deal. Thanks, guys. Good show. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for you. calling. That was a good question. Eddie, how are you doing tonight? How are you doing tonight? How are you doing tonight? Uh-oh. Eddie, you're going to have to turn your TV down in the background. Down in the background. Down in the background. We're going to have to cut. We're going to have to cut. Gonna something here. Let me try again. You always turn your TVs <laughs> down when you're watching the show. How are you doing this afternoon? Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. Uh, Y'all talking about the attractions. What about cover scent? Okay, good question. What would be a good one? I'll get off and listen to you. Okay, thank you so much. Great question. Um, if you want to kill a deer, become a deer. Why not smell like a deer? But and we're going to talk more about We're going to get into that, uh, but, but I'm glad but you brought that, that man, question that up. opened the door up right there. That's okay. Um, cover scent. I, I'm much bigger on a, a cover scent myself than I am a, an eliminator. Or any, I mean, I'm not knocking anybody. I mean, there's there are different products that work on the market. I like a cover scent because, again, I feel it's more natural. Um, if a deer smells deer dander or something like that, which we're going to get to here in a bit, it's natural to them. That's right. And it, is it going to keep them from smelling you? Not necessarily, in my opinion, no. It might buy you, though, that amount of time it takes to maybe, you know, lock them up, hold them for a second. It's going to help cover your scent uh, for sure. I'm, I'm like you. I think deer scents would probably be one of the, the better ways to go with cover. I grew up, uh, my dad's here in the studio with me tonight. He knows, but we've used everything from fox pee to coyote pee. <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, you know, we've oh, yeah. used it all. Cedar, Cedar trees, things, whatever it takes. Cedar but pine, acres. It's apples. all part of the learning experience. I got a quick but, but to answer your question, though, Eddie, we, I, we do like them. I, I do. Wes, you're a good, you're big scent guy. What do you think about cover scent? Not necessarily lemonades, but cover scent. Are you well, pretty big on you that? Well, you know, um, well, I, I probably would lean more towards cover scent. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a I'm a real big scent yeah, free Wes, guy. I was say, Wes, you're a good guy to be asking stuff like that because yeah. you are a I mean, scent uh, guy. I, I try to say it's scent free, but I do. Stu always hunt the wind no matter what I do. Oh, so uh, I'm kind of a guy that. I'm probably not going to hunt a bad wind no matter what I do. Yeah, whether you and, got uh, I'm just that guy. Or, There's people well, that are you know, What if you're I hunting mean, a farm that's got some cattle? Can you step in the cattle yeah. manure and it well, cover you a little bit? It's natural. natural. Yeah. It's right. natural. That's they natural. smell it every day. And that's why you can go to, uh, to uh, and this isn't going to work everywhere, but it works and it works well. So I won't even say a particular place, but let's say you're on a draw hunt on some of these particular recreation areas where people camp year round. Fire. Smoke. Fire. <laughs> yep. That's yep. exactly right. Campfire smoke is one of the very best cover scents you can have on you if you're hunting around one of these areas. Right. Sure. They smell campfire 365 days a year. People are camping. They're smoking those woods. They smell campfire all the time. So that that's a good I one to use. I got another question for him. What if you've just got the property, you've only been able to, and you ain't even been able to really, been able to scout it, but you want to go in and go on and hunt. and but. What would you do the morning of? Would you put scent out the morning you went in, or would you just observe? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use scent. I'm gonna right. smell like a deer right off the bat. I'm going in, I'm going in to be a deer, because the more you're a deer, the more you might. Well, let's say you just walk into an area, 
and you've never been there, you walk in, you wait to the crack of light, or you even walk in there to an area with your flashlight, you've never been there, you find a place and this is where you're gonna hunt. I'm gonna lay out scent. Why? I want deer to think other deer have been there. Right. I want deer to not feel comfortable. Not necessarily a in heat track. Oh, I no, no, I don't. Just a not normal at all. Scene. Only deer in the rut will I use a nesters yeah. product. Yeah. Only deer in the yeah. rut, and only for that very, very, very short window. Yeah. Very short window. Again, the rest of the time. Very effective for a few weeks. That's it is. right. But the rest of the time, it's it's everything else. You know, you know and, and I think that's the biggest mistake people make with any scent is using it the wrong time and using too much. Same way with calls. That's a whole nother show, but deer calls, Wes, would you agree with that? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's deer calls or make or break you. They'll either run every deer in the woods off or they'll call one right to you. Right. And it's when you use it, how little or how much you use it. And that's the and, same way with scent. Right, and nowadays, I was gonna ask you earlier, we have city deer and we have deer that live out that don't never see anybody. Yeah. I'm gonna hunt them Are different. You, you, yeah. Okay, then you gotta hunt yeah. them different. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear plaid and, uh, and khakis. To hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's the only thing they see uh, walking yeah, down the street. Yeah. Thing, you know, wear your pajamas. Another yeah. thing, you walking the dog. That's you know, right. That's right. Right. You know? That's guys, right. we're gonna go over now and do this week's official tip of the week. I guess <laughs> this week's tip of the week is being sponsored by our good friend Wes Stone over at Crowlight Realtors. Y'all can contact Wes 615-289-9551 or go see him there at four. 1432 West Main Street in Lebanon. Let West take care of all your real estate needs. Or, like tonight, you talk to him about mock scrapes, your sand elimination, or whatever you want. He's always that. 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 He's always Try to kill something. <laughs> I mean, the poor what, boy is Dan, what, you, what kind of tip you got for us tonight? Go make mock scrapes, make some more mock scrapes, and when you get through making those mock scrapes, make a bunch more. Let the deer tell you where they want to be. The more mock scrapes you make, the more scouting you do with the mock scrapes, the more pin down that you're going to find deer in an area and then you then you get after them to hunt. Yep. And just and make to, them and make them and make them and make them. To kind of expand on what uh, Dan's saying too again is like once these deer get on these mock scrapes, I they mean, they're going to work them themselves. They're going to be continuing laying scent. They're going to be giving their yeah. identification. They the whole herd going for you that's that using your farm is going to start you know, working the that go out. Yeah. And it's going to snowball for you. You know, as, and you know, doctor it up again every now and then. Uh, it's going to work itself to a point. You know, but yeah. naturally the deer start sure. using it. They're yeah. putting their own scent on it. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, create a mock scrape for them to take it over. Find their scrape and you take it over. All right. Yep. Well, guys, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back here in just a minute with some more Southern Woods and Waters.